So we talk a lot on this channel about anti-centrist theory, which is the theory about why centrists are undermining our society, how is it that centrism prevents any real change from happening in this society, and how is it that centrism manifests in the modern day. But all of this theory is just that. It, it's theory. And one of the most important parts of any ideology is putting that theory into practice. A lot of people have been asking me for practical ways to fight back against the centrist scourge. Well, soon the day will come when there are no more centrists left. But until that day, we should probably work on some ways that are practical of combating the centrist threat when it emerges. People have been telling me, okay, I know centrists are bad, I know anti-centrist theory, but what is anti-centrist praxis? To which I say, okay, Google, what is praxis? Here's a summary from Wikipedia. Praxis is the act of rehearsing a behavior over and over or engaging- Define praxis. Here's the definition of praxis. Formal. Practice as distinguished from theory. This is why I have 60,000 YouTube subscribers. Praxis is putting ideological theory into practice. So for example, military coups and organizing, protesting, unionizing, all that kind of stuff, when motivated by ideology, is praxis. Every theory needs some kind of practical application so that it can manifest in the real world. Otherwise, what's the point of the theory in the first place? It's important now more than ever that we act upon our beliefs. Your enemy will try to make you think that your beliefs don't matter. But now, more than ever, they do. As individuals and as groups, we have the ability to affect real social change, as long as we believe and as long as we commit the right praxis. In my time fighting the centrist threat, I have learned a few things that I would like to pass on to you. So without further ado, here are some anti-centrist praxis techniques. Don't go outside. You know what's outside? Centrists! Don't rally, don't organize, don't meet up with people who share your beliefs and work on collective action in order to do something. No, stay in your room and browse 4chan furiously. Eventually you'll wake up one day and the world will just be however you want it to be. It's truly incredible how these things work out. Use the word praxis a lot. Praxis. Praxis. I'm doing a praxis. I summon thee, the dark god praxis. I have been bequeathed to the dark blade of praxis. Now I can do something that actually benefits the planet in, in, in any way. My ideology is not just role playing. Be an individual. You're not a member of no group. You're an individual. You're separate. You're too cool to get lumped in with all those other people who believe exactly what you believe. You know what's good? Individualism. We need more individualism. I'm never gonna associate with anything or anybody. I'll just be my own independent person. Me as an individual will change everything. You're not a member of no group. You don't need to be a part of something. You don't need to join an organization to affect social change. You just be you. You know what happens when people form groups? Populism. And populism's bad. You don't want to have populism. Never associate with anybody or anything. Just try to affect social change by yourself. See how that works out. Because you know, as an individual, guess what you can do? You can vote. Call it quits for the rest of the year. You filled in a name on a ballot. You can make small individualistic consumer choices that won't change the system that the consumer choices are made in. You can make some angry 4chan posts and then go back to never doing anything political in your life. Needlessly argue over infinitesimally small things that the general public doesn't give a fuck about. Let's say you accidentally find yourself a part of the group. Just undo all of that progress by looking through all of the individual things you believe, finding one single thing that you believe that the group doesn't, and then using that single thing is an excuse to distance yourself from the rest of the group so that everybody pointlessly infights over garbage that the general populace just doesn't give a fuck about because it's so obscure and theoretical and will never have any actual utility in the real world and instead just start Twitter fights over over some very minor specific niche thing that just no one cares about and 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 that no one will ever care about ever so instead of fighting your political enemies you just punch yourself in the face over and over again and that's that's uh that's what you want to do <laughs> trust my opinion on public policy but also i can't work together with people i agree with on 99 percent of things because they disagree with me on one percent of things <laughs>
Say the same thing that everybody's already heard, but say it angrily. Arr, political talking point! Arr, political talking point! Debate with others who are also only just saying the same thing over and over again. Arr, Arr, political talking point! 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 Centrism when you see it. Seriously though, the best way to combat centrism is literally just to call it out. If you see somebody both sidesing, if you see somebody comparing two extremes as the same thing, if you see somebody using the word polarized and just like expecting you to think that that's a bad thing for no reason, like without justifying why it's a bad thing, they're just like, oh, polarization, that's bad. Uh oh, we don't want people disagreeing with each other more. That person is a fence sitter. That person is a centrist. And call them that. Call them a centrist. After all, the centrist is immunized against all dangers. One can call him a donut boy, a shepherd of Overton, a fence sitter, a both sizer. All these terms run off him like rain off a raincoat. But call him a centrist, and you will see how injured he is, how he shrinks back. I've been found out. <laughs> now listen, I'm not saying you should go out and harass centrists online. That would be against community guidelines. What I am saying is, you know, if you see someone unironically both sizing, just, I don't know, surround their name in donut emojis harmlessly. You know, something like that. If you don't have time to entirely surround their name in donut emojis, I don't know, maybe just, uh, I don't know, put three donuts on each end of their name, something, something like this. I don't know, I mean, I'm just spitballing here. Upon doing all this praxis, you might realize that nothing has changed. All you've succeeded in doing is wasting your time and energy trying to change the opinion of people you've never met. And the question is, is that what politics is asking from you? That you spend hours and hours of your time staying informed and up to date with the world, and then after that, after you care so deeply about something, all you can do is vote? That's it? <laughs> That's the extent of your power as an individual? One vote? Because that would mean that ultimately all of the theory that we're filling our heads with amounts to nothing but screaming matches over Twitter while the system that we're screaming in gets stronger and more solidified and it really feels like there's just nothing I can do about anything. With all that in mind, it's really not that surprising that most people choose to live an individualistic life that's completely divorced from politics just because what is the alternative? To devote your life, your emotional energy, your effort into trying to change a system that will only budge about an inch with all of your entire life's effort put into your push? Is that how you want to spend your life? Or would you rather just check out, pretend like everything's okay, and, uh, you know, live an individualistic sort of existence? We've seen how wrong and how destructive people's ideologies can be when put into practice. Maybe it's, maybe it's better just to stay on the internet and pretend like we're making a difference. Because no matter what you say or what you do, everything just gets commodified by the system that it's, it's being set in. Everything is just more merchandise. Anyway, I uh, should probably get on to the last point of anti-centrist praxis, which is buying my t-shirt. Uh, I've partnered with Bonfire. It's, uh, it's this uh, t-shirt website. They make premium quality tees, and we're currently working on a few designs for you guys right now. Uh, we're going to have a burn the fence down t-shirt, maybe even a brick through the Overton window t-shirt. Now these are gonna be very high quality tees, and you can just you'll, uh, keep, keep an eye out for it. You'll, you'll be able to buy them soon. more important than having praxis in your life if praxis was a woman she'd be my wife if praxis was a um, butter i would cut it with my knife yeah Ooh, i sure do love praxis me and praxis go way back Praxis once had a heart attack, it was a heart attack sis For my wife Praxis And as she laid there dying, I said This is really unfortunate But I still love you Praxis I can't 
can't pay my taxes. This is unrelated to the song. I can't pay it. Praxis, praxis. Ooh, I, I gotta get some snacks. Uh, I need some granola bars to, to eat with my wife Praxis, except she's dead now, I guess. This, this, this song really isn't following a logical order. The most important thing in the world is knowing what Praxis is. And I know what Praxis is. It's, um, uh... I mean, look look it up yourself. I, I really can't. I can't do it justice in this short song. Uh, but I definitely know what I'm talking about. I, I, I'm not just succumbing to a Dunning-Kuger effect where I read a couple lines on Wikipedia and think I know what the fuck I'm talking about and then disseminate that, that information to a bunch of people and then they think I know what the fuck I'm talking about and it's just like a, a big ol' big ol' lie. Praxis, Praxis, I know what Praxis is. I know what Praxis is. I know what Praxis is. Praxis makes perfect, and you know that you're worth it. Praxis, Praxis, we gotta, we gotta have it. If you don't have Praxis in your life, then Praxis isn't your wife, or husband, or, um, like a gender non-conforming version of husband and wife, not really. Praxis, praxis, do buddy do. Praxis, praxis, I've got praxis.